I recently published a video on .NET Core 3 on how to create a WPF application on .NET Core 3. And I've been getting a lot of questions about, well, what if I have an existing application, right? I have a, a, an application that's in production and I wanna see about converting this to .NET Core 3 so I'm ready when it's released. Hi, I'm Brian Lagunas. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to convert your existing WPF application to a .NET Core 3 WPF application. The application we're going to be converting today is a WPF Prism application. Now I chose this application because it's small enough to convert in a short amount of time and it has some common things that you'll run into when you, you know, convert your bigger production type applications. That being NuGet packages, other projects that are referenced by a main project, uh, multiple views for example, just, just a few of those items. Uh, of course, before you start converting your application, you'll have to make sure that you have .NET Core 3 installed. So go to github.com slash .NET slash core dash setup. Scroll down, make sure you have the runtime and host installer installed. Pick the platform of your choice, install it. And also go to github.com slash .NET slash core dash SDK. Scroll down and make sure you have the latest build of .NET Core 3 for your platform, for example, I'm on Windows X64, I would select this installer here. Now I've already installed .NET Core 3, so I am good to go. So the next step to this is to actually start converting the application. Now keeping in mind that we do have NuGet packages and we do have references to other projects such as Module A here, uh, we'll come back to that. But for now, let's start just like we did when we created a new one in my previous video. We're going to unload this project and we're going to edit the .cs proj file. Once this loads, we're gonna select all and delete. We're gonna create a new project node. We're going to set the SDK equal to Microsoft.net.sdk.wpf. And I have a typo there, Microsoft, perfect. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is create a property group. And in this property group, we need an output type. This is going to be a win exe. We also need to set a target framework. And this target framework is gonna be net core app 3.0. And lastly, we need an assembly name. We will call this navigation Participation, perfect. All right, the next step is to create an item group. And this, in this item group, we need an application definition. We're going to include the app.xaml. Okay, for now, I'm not gonna add any views yet. So there is one more thing I have to add. I'm gonna add another item group. And in this item group, it's a framework reference, and we're going to include Microsoft.desktop UI. Now for now, I'm gonna leave everything else out. Let's go ahead and reload the project. We're gonna be prompted to close this document, and yes, let's close it. And sometimes you'll get this error, uh, of course it's supported. This is just a tooling issue. Just ignore it, hit okay. Now, the first thing I wanna point out is that our view is actually in a views folder. So if we go ahead and right click and say edit, now we can come into our application definition, just under our application definition and add a new page and include views slash main window dot XAML. Now, for now, we have to manually do this. Uh, eventually, the tooling will fix this. Uh, and I have a typo there, so let's go ahead and just remove that. And that's better. Okay, as I was saying, uh, it's early in .NET Core 3. As the tooling improves, this will be fixed, but for now, you have to manually add this. And I will note, you will have to do this for every XAML file in your application, you'll have to manually add the page include. Okay, that's all you have to do. And sometimes the designer will throw this in here. You don't need it, just delete it. I don't like it in there. I clean it up and I get rid of it. Okay, so the next thing we have to do 
is we actually have NuGet packages on this one. So I'm gonna look at this package that I config and I'm gonna see exactly what NuGet package I need to add. Now, the cool thing about this is the old style of the packages.config, you have to list like every single package is used. I hate this, this is annoying, and it really causes a lot of problems for you know, library authors who have dependencies because just because a dependency has an update doesn't mean you should update it because you might actually break uh, something that you're using. For example, let's say you're using prism.unity and an update comes out to common service locator and it's like a 3.0. When you go ahead and upgrade that, well, guess what? You just broke binary compatibility with prism.unity and now you're crashing. And the new version, you don't have to do that. The new way you do it in the SDK style project is pretty awesome. You're simply going to put the root, the topmost package that you're going to add. So in this case, we're going to add another item group and I'm going to add a package reference going to include prism dot unity. Okay. Now we need a version. Now prism just so happens to have a .NET core three assembly available. So instead of using a, a stable version that's on NuGet, I actually am connected to a MyGet feed, which gives me access to the CI builds. So I'm going to say 7.2.0.639-CI. Now, the reason I know that is because I wrote it and also because it's on the MyGet feed and it tells me that the newest version. You could also right click and say manage NuGet packages and it will do the same thing, uh, but we don't have to do that. I just did it by hand. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, close it. And now I can delete this packages.config file because it's no longer needed. Now let's go ahead and build and, and see what happens. We'll, we're going to get an error. All right. So we say build fail and normally you get that. Oh, it actually showed up. They must have improved something since the last, uh, the last update. Previously, you would not get these errors in the error list. The error list count is zero, but I do have errors in here. So normally what you have to do is you have to come to your output window and look for what the error could be. So if you're debugging, if you're getting build errors and you don't see anything in this error list, go to your output window, they will be listed there. So it's just basically saying that if I open up my properties here, all these assembly versions, this is all duplicate. Like you don't use this in the SDK style project anymore. Now, my last video, we actually deleted the whole properties folder. Well, chances are if you're upgrading or converting an existing application, you're actually using these resources and these settings files. So don't delete that. Just come in here and delete all the assembly uh, attributes that you find. If you don't have anything special in there, you can just delete it. Like I'm just going to delete the assembly info file because we don't need it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a build. I'm still expecting an error, but for a different reason. Perfect. Okay. Module A cannot be found. Remember this project referenced the module A. So let's come back to this and go ahead and convert module A. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing we did with the main application. I'm going to unload it. I'm going to edit the project file, control A and delete everything. And because I'm lazy, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to copy everything in here and I'm going to paste it into module A. Now, one thing I have to do in module A, this is not an executable. So delete the executable line, the just keep the target framework and the assembly name. Another thing we need to get rid of is the application definition. We are not using that. We also do not have any pages yet, but we do keep the framework reference. And actually the package reference is different for the module. Uh, the package reference here will be .wpf here. And that's just a, a prism thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and reload the project. So we added our packages, right? Our NuGet package. So let's go ahead and delete that. We do not need the assembly info file. We will delete that. Once again, we're keeping the resources and settings because if you're in a production application, most likely you are using those. So we'll leave those there. And we have some view models and ah, two views. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna edit our module A. And remember, 
For now, in this current version, you have to manually put in every XAML file as a page. So we're gonna say page include, it's in the views folder, view a dot XAML. Okay, I'm just gonna copy that and paste it down. And the next one is view B dot XAML. Okay, uh, that added, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that mess that gets thrown in there sometimes. Uh, everything looks good. Okay, now let's go ahead and do a build here. Perfect, it worked. So the next step would be to take any projects that are main executable referenced and add those references back. Now we can do that manually or we can just do the old right click, add a project reference, hit okay, and boom, it's added for you. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what was added. A project reference was added to module A, module A.CS proj. So this is the code that was put into your project file when you did the right click action. All right, so now I'm gonna build the application. We should have a successful build and let's run it. And I got an exception. And that's because that old copy and paste bug bit me in the butt. So let's go ahead and stop this. Let's edit this project again. Remember when I did that copy and paste? Yeah, I forgot to update the assembly name. Why didn't you guys tell me that? So we're gonna change that to module A. So we gotta make sure that our assembly names are unique. Let's rebuild that. Okay, double check this. Perfect, now let's run the app. And here's the app running just like you would expect. It behaves just like it did before, but this time it is running on .NET Core 3 alone. In my next video, I'll show you how to create an installer package that allows you to either upload this to the Microsoft Store for installation, or you can send it out to your customers so they can sideload it onto their Windows machines. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.